Hey guys, this is Chris Brigani from Brigani Coins and Collectibles. I have a great collection of the True Home Run King, Roger Maris. Uh, there's a few autographs here. We have a photo, we have a bat, we have what we call an index card or a signed flat, and some bobbleheads. The best item, believe it or not, is this first day cover here. Um, maybe not as attractive as a signed bat or a photo or even a signed baseball, but to me, this is one of the rarest pieces, and it's not necessarily the most expensive item here either. So let's actually start with the most expensive item here, which is the baseball bat. So we have a limited edition bat uh, signed by Roger Maris here, 27 of 115. Um, a little known fact about this run is actually they never actually did 115. It was stopped short somewhere, but they just don't know exactly where. So. It was probably more like 100 or less to be um, a, a little more exact. So we have Roger Myers here. It's an official bat. And then on the opposite side here, you have his counterpart, the best home run tandem in baseball history, um, Mickey Mantle. So 54 home runs in 1961 for Mantle and 61, obviously, for Roger Maris, the true home run king again. Uh, so this value uh, on this bat, nice clean bat, dark signatures, 10,000 and up uh, easily, even in auction. Uh, these bats are really in high demand. Everybody loves uh, Mantle Maris, part of baseball history. Even though Roger Maris is never a Hall of Famer, he's probably the, mo the most expensive autograph we have and the player we sell the most who's not a Hall of Famer. Because everybody's collections are filled with Hall of Famers. But Roger Maris, again, he's just, he actually never made it to the Hall of Fame. He had some great uh, seasons, 1960, 1961, AL MVP, 61, obviously. He won the World Series and set the home run record. But never uh, had enough of those seasons to make it to the Hall of Fame. The next item is a Roger Maris signed photo. It's just hitting his 61st home run here. He inscribed it, which is pretty rare, but not um, unheard of. Best of luck, kind of a generic inscription, uh, Roger Maris. Nice high quality signature on a uh, eight by 10 photo. These were printed up in the uh, 80s, these photos. And when sports memorabilia collecting really got popular in, in the 80s, they had all these sports exhibition shows, which they still have today. So a lot of this stuff was signed in the late 70s and early 80s because Roger Maris died in 1985 and he didn't really attend the big shows in the uh, mid to late 80s that Mickey Mantle did and Joe DiMaggio and Ted Williams. So his, the population of his autograph is way significantly less than those three guys. Um, so that's a great item here. The value on this, about 1000 to $1,500 uh, for a nicer signature like that. Um, I just want to pan across uh, to my other side over here. We'll get back to that item at the end here. Roger Maris, index card 3x5, nice clean signature, dark black, a sharpie on an index card. N nothing real special. Again, he has a rare autograph, so that's about $500, but um, not as desirable as, as these other mediums. And then just above him, we have two bobbleheads here. Both um, these were issued at souvenir shops and at Yankee Stadium just as mementos and souvenirs for fans. Finding these in outstanding condition like they are is uh, pretty rare, um, although you know they do exist. Um, the small one is actually way more rare than the big one. Just a little uh, tidbit there. So I really want to get to this. This here is a first day cover. So it's postmarked as to when it was signed. And you may say, well, why is that so much better than the other Roger Maris I just showed you? On the index card. Well, the inscription. Uh, Roger Maris inscribed 61 home runs, 1961. Just lay it flat here so you can maybe get a better look at it. So Roger Maris never inscribed, or almost never. You saw the photo, um, best of luck. Okay, yeah, he inscribed photos a little bit, but there were more generic inscriptions. Any meaningful inscription, 61 home runs in 1961, stuff like that just doesn't exist. This is the, in fact, the only flat item I've ever seen with, a, with an inscription from Roger Maris like that. I've seen one other in auction on a photo, but this was in auction archives going back about 10 or 15 years. It was a photo signed the same exact way, which sold for, I wanna say about six or seven grand, and that was, like I said, 10 to 15 years ago. So a price for something like that is easily 10 to 15 grand today uh, with today's numbers. 
What else is special about this other than the great inscription is the first day cover itself. So yes, it's beautiful, it's white, it's got a little cream uh, toning color, but there's no soiling or foxing or anything. Um, also the printing on it, if you look over here, there's a beautiful vignette of Babe Ruth and they have a centennial of, centennial of the baseball, that's why it was created. But what Babe Ruth actually adds a, a little uh, you know, more to it because Roger Maris broke Babe Ruth's record of 60 home runs. Although they wanted to put an asterisk next to Roger Maris because he did it in 162 games, whereas Ruth, the regular season was only 154 games. The uh, asterisk obviously gone now, and Roger Maris, the true home run king, um, no matter what anyone tells you. So back to the vignette again. A beautiful, a beautifully printed. If you, I don't know if you could see it through the camera here, but if you can get, it's really crystal clear. The imagery, the vignette is. Um, so, again, this was a centennial of baseball. It was postmarked uh, just above Roger Maris here, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, September twenty fourth, nineteen sixty nine. So, a hundred years prior um, is, it's it's argued, but it's the. The, the original, the first baseball team, which was in Ohio, which was the Cincinnati Red Stockings. So they were the first uh, professional baseball team with actual salaried players. And um, they lasted until about 1889 before they went over to Boston. And of course, today they're the Red Sox. Um, and then shortly after they left, the Cincinnati Reds were a new team in 1882. Um, so that's a little history about why they actually made this vignette. And then up in the right corner, you have the original stamp from that day too. So Congress uh, enacted a, um, a stamp to be created for the 100 years of baseball. And that's what that's when this was issued. And it's, of course, uh, postmarked there. I mean, uh, stamped first day of issue. So that's why they're called first day of issues or first, uh, first day covers. That's what they are. A little history on this. This came out of, I'll turn it around here. If, I don't know if you recognize uh, that name, but Tom Aiken was a probably the biggest or one of the biggest collectors of sports memorabilia of his time. In the 1970s, he put together the Ohio Sports uh, or the Ohio Baseball Hall of Fame. And everything in his collection was pristine uh, quality from the autographs to the mediums they were on. All the balls were bright white all the flats were bright white just like this and all the signatures were super dark and he was actually so meticulous he would provide the pen to the players um, whether it was through the mail or in person he always had a certain ink and a certain pen he would ask them to sign with so stuff from his collection always commands a premium on top of that just because collectors know if it comes from the Tom Eakin collection it's pristine quality so that's a little um a little history on Roger Maris autographs here. Um, oh, I wanted to compare this to a single sign baseball real quick. So a single sign baseball with the, the inscription 61 in 1961 or 60 home runs, 61 home runs in 1961, they do exist. I've seen a few of them. There's probably about five to 10 total. Um, I'd argue more towards the five side than 10. And those regularly in auction, even for faded ones, are bringing 10, 11, 12,000. And there's a super nice one in auction. It brought about $18,000 or $17,000 um, a few years back. Easily a $20,000 bull today. Condition like that um, doesn't exist. Um, and then, of course, it's the inscription uh, 61 home runs, 1961. So, super rare to have Maris inscribed. So, if you ever see anything inscribed by Roger Maris, other than best of luck, Okay, it's a, it's a nice inscription, but it really doesn't uh, do as much as something like this. I've never actually seen a Hall of Fame inscription, or obviously you wouldn't see a Hall of Fame, but I've never seen other um, statistics you know, inscriptions by Roger Maris either. So really cool item. I actually like it more than the Maris Mantle Bat, which is valued over 10000 and this is probably about half of that. It's just something we don't see here, whereas these Mantle Maris Bats, we see them in auction, we try to buy them all the time. People bring them to us, you know, we buy them over the counter here. Uh, Roger Maris Flats, pretty common. But again, he did, died in 1985, so he didn't get to do the rounds that Mantle did, that Jamaggio did, that Ted Williams did, all those guys, Tam Usual. Uh, forget about the, the population on those guys is not even close to Roger Maris. 
Anyway, great collection here. Come by our store. You can check it out online too. Really great items. Please comment, share, like the video. Thanks.